too much caffeine tonight. And a nice little email debate with the person. Of course, they gave up. I've, uh, you throw out your net, you'll always catch a big one. It's kind of amazing how groupthink works. We've, uh, every branch of science has always been defeated, depending on when it was, sometimes 100 or 200 years, sometimes even more than that, uh, in the past few hundred years. It gets defeated at about every 30 or 40, like everything we formerly thought was just nonsense. We got a whole new picture of reality. I'd like to uh, go over this, uh, and it's edifying. You know, it's about learning something. Um, debate is not about debate itself. It's about, um, you know, uh, laying low what uh, must be irrational and illogical and, uh, you know, giving uh, fruition to what is uh, true, logical, and sensible. Um, the ancient form of uh, entertainment in uh, India is they actually had debating halls all over the place and people would come together, they didn't have popcorn then, and they'd watch uh, great minds hash it out and it wasn't fighting or fighting words. I mean, it was uh, using pure logic and wisdom and what is sensible and rational because, and a lot of people today certainly don't realize this, even like, you know, say an illiterate farmer or something, there is an innate seed within the soul of every human being. Um, doesn't matter about education at all. Doesn't matter if they're literate. They know fundamentally, just as you know, like some deer, you know, a deer doesn't have any school training or anything, you know, it knows when to jump, it knows when to eat, and it knows when to sleep. It fundamentally understands nature. I mean, it knows what is real and what's not. I mean, that's how creatures keep themselves alive, and they know what to do, when to do it, even though their parents don't teach them anything. Human beings actually have that within themselves, so even if a person is completely illiterate, and uh, no education at all. They can see, you know, the, as uh, a modern person would intelligent call these are like dumb people. Well, these, and I've seen this when I lived in San Francisco. They, I was like, oh, you're from Kentucky, huh? Oh, and you're up there chewing tobacco and playing banjos? Like, you haven't got a clue. I, I used to encounter that stuff when I lived in San Francisco. I'd meet people like, oh, you're from Kentucky, huh? We all, it's like pathetic pathetic. These people actually have common sense up in the hills and they can read the weather and they can do stuff that almost seems magical, including knowing how to use a dowsing rod to find water and oil and stuff. You know, there's, there's a reason why they thrive. So anyway, getting on to this, um, back to this, uh, you know, the debating halls where people would watch, you know, great minds uh, clash and uh, one would be, uh, in a typical debate, totally defeated. It's like, wow, this person, you know, he makes a lot more sense. You know, I used to believe this, this uh, guy, but this guy completely defeated him using facts, logic, and reason. So this is how these people think, and I've encountered this many times, and I'll read what this person sent me. And it's edifying to understand the, the endless uh, pitfalls in this sort of uh, circular logic where they use one concept to explain another, which of course, you know, endless definitions are not explanations, as I've uh, said, because uh, explanations are, you know, these, when people define something, well, this is what this is, like we didn't explain anything. So this is what this person said, and uh, he uh, attacked me for talking about, and I've had this happen many, many times, attacked me for talking about the ether and about fields. He says, you need to study the difference between an, a, man, uh, a mechanical wave and uh, an electric, uh, electromagnetic wave. Well, you know, a mechanical wave, of course, something is moving, like waves in the water, you know, like this is a wave, that would be my hands, that would be a mechanical wave explanation. But when you talk about electromagnetic waves, which this person brought up, you know, they're using one concept to explain another, but on top of that, you know, as I said, nature must be rational and realistic. An electromagnetic what? You say, well, let's talk about electromagnetic waves. You know, wh whether it be electromagnetic wave or a mechanical wave, a wave is not a thing at all, rather what a thing does. So if you want to talk about electromagnetic waves, and I've done this many times, let's talk about electromagnetism. You know, well, what is electromagnetism? Well, it's a field of force. It's like, what? You, you, you just, 
it conjured up another concept and another concept on top. So, and this person said, a magnetic field, for example, is a region in space in which every point is affected. And you can find this stuff all over the internet. Magnetic field is a region of space in which every point <laughs> is affected by the electromagnetic force above a certain threshold level. A field is a region in space in which all points are affected by a natural force. And then he arrogantly said, you're welcome. Well, a region? This person replaced a field. We don't have to talk about electromagnetic fields. We can talk about electrical fields or magnetic fields. It doesn't make any difference. We can talk about electromagnetic fields. But a region, a region is a, a coordinate of something. It's not a thing. A region, you know, a region of influence, like, you know, a border, you know, a country would have a region where it, this region falls underneath the laws of that country. And outside of that region, you're not subject to those laws. But within that border, you're subject, with that region or border, you're subject to something. That, that's a coordinate. That's not a thing. It's another concept. When you actually put one concept and you pile on another concept, you're not only not explaining anything, you're actually obfuscating things. So, points. Point is a concept. There's no such thing as a point in nature. We could have spatial divergence or spatial convergence. We could have uh, increasing inertia and acceleration or uh, centripetal or centrifugal uh, uh, divergence or convergence, which, of course, we see in weather patterns. But uh, a point, there's no such thing as a point. It's a human concept. Mother Nature has no idea what a point is. Mother Nature only deals in pressure mediations. Force, and they'll talk about force. Well, a force is not a thing either. You know, especially when it comes to fields, you know, a force is not a thing at all. A force of what, by what, uh, upon what. When you talk about a force, they, so that these scientists love to talk about force. Well, what's doing the force? What is the medium in which, oh, that's where you really confuse them. And what medium is the force occurring? Because these people flat out deny the ether. Well, it's space time. There's no such thing as space-time. Space-time is a concept reification. There's no such thing as time, which is only a measure of magnitudes, and space has no properties, as Nikola Tesla famously and accurately said. Force, what's the force being done by, and what is the medium in which it's being done by? Because these people have no chance in heck of explaining the phenomena that we call gravity, because there's no medium there. They think there is. They'll have gravitational, they'll actually say virtual particles or virtual photons, which is completely ludicrous. And they'll talk about fields endlessly. So they use these four magic words to talk about something that they can't explain. It's like, well, you want to talk about electromagnetic waves? Fine, girlfriend. Let's talk about electromagnetic waves. Let's talk about regions, points, a force, and a field. Well, region and points, you know, and that's, that's a coordinate. A point, there's no such thing as a point. A force is not a thing either. A force is done by something upon something else. And none of these people have ever defined a field. However, defining same is extremely simple. A field is an ether perturbation modality. So this is the sort of mental gymnastics, these uh, pseudo-intellectuals, and, you know, they really whip out the clown car, you know, they ride it around the circus rink, and they throw glitter in your face. And you say, well, let's, let's talk about electromagnetic. You want to talk about mechanical waves? Let's talk about electromagnetic waves. We could dismiss waves because there's no such thing as a wave. A wave is what something does, whether it be mechanical or field wave. Yeah, scientists love to talk about waves, too. It's like waves of what, by what, upon what. What's the medium? Yo, the medium really... Oh, they don't like the medium. Because when you talk about the medium, we must talk about the ether. But the ether is the great evil word that shall not be uttered by current academia and science, which is totally materialistic and totally atomistic. So, they're easy to confuse. And let's get to the dictionary definition of a field of force. They never define field, and force is not a thing itself. Noun, the region of space surrounding a body, such as a charged particle or a magnet, within which it can exert a force on another similar body, not in contact with it. 
Now here's these uh, magic words used again. They use one concept to prop up another concept. They use magic nonsense with more magic nonsense. Region. And they use the word space. Within which it can exert a force. They use region, space, and force again. These are not things at all. Says, what's a field? <laughs> the other magic word they use is quantum. Let me give you, and this is the inside secret to these people and how they throw glitter in your face. It's like when you ask a, a true, deep, honest question. They're so intellectually dishonest. This is the four or five, there's actually more than that, uh, types of glitter that they throw on your face. Like, you know, you ask them a tough question, even though it's region, re, uh, rational and logical and very sensible. An honest question. Well, what's a field? What's electromagnetic? You know, these are the glitters they throw. Points, regions, force, and, um, and um, <clears throat> oh, space-time. Points, region, force, uh, space-time. Force. Not in contact with it. Well, if it's not in contact, you know, you can't use electrons to talk about it because they think everything is uh, particle-based. If you're an, a hammer, as I've said many times, everything's a nail. If you're an atomist, everything's a particle. They can't explain the phenomena that we call gravity. This is completely inexplicable. And if they actually said, we don't know what gravity is, <clears throat> some of them will actually admit that. We have no idea what gravity is. There, There's no particles being emitted or, con you know, being uh, communicated back and forth between the earth or the ground and this rock. None. There's no communication going on. So what is this acceleration? Gravity is not a force at all. It's an acceleration. But they're not accelerating towards one another. They're accelerating at the low pressure point between the two vis-a-vis -vis the ether because space is ether rarefaction. That's what space is, by the way. Space is ether rarefaction and space is also, too, the after effect of a divergent magnetic field. But they'll invoke one concept after another to try to explain something when you ask them a serious, logical, honest question. Because they don't know, and if they actually, they would be smart. And I would see them as smart if they said, you know, I really, really want to know, but we don't know yet. I desperately want to know what these things are, but I don't know. But since they're hubristic and they're so full of themselves, they'll say, well, there's a region, it's a point, it's a force, it's a field can't define a field and these other things are just more concepts piled on top of more concepts you know force of what by what done upon what it's not particles this is carried by fields well you've never defined a field don't invoke a word that you cannot define I dare anybody to use a word in a debate, a formal, logical, intelligent, rational debate, if they themselves can't define it. What's a field? You keep talking about waves and fields and force and regions and points, but you can't explain any of these rationally, logically, and intelligently. If you can't do that, then you can't use the word. It's as simple as that. I mean, that's not extravagant. So this is this argument, uh, and it wasn't an argument, it's completely one-sided. These people are taught to believe this stuff. It's like uh, the old days people would uh, trick uh, rich noblemen. They would travel from town to town saying they were teaching dragon fighting skills and they'd collect some gold coins to teach someone how to fight a dragon. Well, dragons don't exist. It's like, ah, oh, dragons do exist. I went to dragon fighting school, man. I paid... Three gold, uh, three gold shillings to learn how to fight dragons. Oh, yeah, that's good. You threw your money away to a con artist to learn how to fight something that doesn't exist. Well, I went to college and I learned about this stuff, and you're a fool. You know, this is established science. They love how they use the word science, like it's that's that's it. It's science. When they actually say science, what they mean is that you can't question it because it's science. How dare you question it? Because it's science. A lot of people are doing that today, especially in the year 2020 and 2021. Man, they are really using that word. What they mean when they use the word science is you don't dare question it. No, because it's science. <laughs> don't dare you question it.
There's the other angle where they get you. You can't question this. This is in all sorts of academic PhD articles and books about fields and regions and points and forces. How dare you? Here we go. We're getting back to uh, like uh, uh, Greta Thunderbunny. How dare you? <laughs> How dare you question it? It's science. It's science. <laughs> <laughs> it is a religion. It's not a, it's a belief system. It's not actual science from true Aristotelian definition. It's not. So this is, uh, I went back and forth with this uh, less than intelligent uh, person for like about 20 emails, letting him humor himself. And, you know, eventually he just, I think he started to foam at the mouth. Not that I can see that, but he's just not an intelligent person. He's not even slightly intelligent. You replace one concept with another. It's like, what's a field of force? We know there's, you know, there's force being done between these bodies, you know, and we know there's a field there. But what's a field of force? Well, here's the definition: a region of space, region, space surrounding a body such as a charged particle or a magnet, within which it can exert a force upon another similar body not in contact with it. They reify space-time, so. But there's no such thing as space-time. Space-time is not a thing, nor could it be bent any sooner than you could bend unicorn farts, I say humorously. So this is the stuff and the type of people I've debated, and this is me do no different than me debating the Buddhists. Um, there's absolutely fundamentally, of the dec decades I've been debating these people and the Buddhists, there's, no di there's not a hair's difference between them because it's a religion and a belief system. How dare you? It's science. In other words, you can't question it. Well, I can question it because what you're saying is illogical. It's uh, nonsensical. It's irrational. And you just use one concept to prop up another concept. It's like somebody talking like a little kid would say, hey, don't mess with me. My big Uncle Bob will come and get you. You know, don't mess with me. And like, you never seen Uncle Bob, and you know it's a figment of his imagination, right? The little kid. As well. And then they use another uh, nonsense to prop up that nonsense, like these people do. It's like, well, Uncle Bob's out of town, but his, his brother, Uncle Larry, is even bigger, and he'll, <laughs> he'll get you. <laughs> it's like, these people don't exist. They invoke, and this is what makes it a religion, it's a belief system. They, they invoke one nonsense uh, to support another nonsense, and to support those two nonsenses, they invent another nonsense. You got, over here we got points and forces and fields, and then over here to prop, all up, to prop up the, the unicorns and the leprechauns and the Bigfoots of points, fields, and uh, forces and fields, they have a, 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 a big mama jama uh, nonsense to prop all of those up, which is space time. So we got the three nonsenses, nonsenses of uh, points, forces, fields, and regions. Let's say four of them. And it's like, well, to prop up all of that hooey, hooey malarkey nonsense, we got the big malarkey, space time. <laughs> You have to be able, you have to have a clear, uh, intelligent mind to see what these people do. They use one baloney to prop up another baloney. Well, that's not enough baloney for you. I got more baloney to support my other baloney. <laughs> it's really that funny. Well, you don't believe that baloney? Well, I got more baloney to prop up that baloney you didn't believe. I was like, you don't buy that baloney? No, I don't buy your baloney because that baloney is baloney. Well, I've got an even bigger baloney that props up that baloney. <laughs> oh, my God. You have to be able to think clearly to see through these people. And to me, they're transparent as tissue paper. Should have said tracing paper. I hope you got a laugh out of this because I find it extremely funny. And it is edifying. You have to be able to see through these people because they're like, uh, you know, the, the clown and the, with the big shoes and the little clown car that's really, really small in the circus. Me, me. You know, the, the, the giant clown driving the clown car around and his big feet are sticking out. It's like, yeah, I, I see this for what it is. It's funny. And, well, I, 
well, they think they're the El Presidente, you know, riding the stretched limo. It's like, no, you're a clown in a clown car. It's a bunch of malarkey. They whip out their baloney. So you don't like that? Well, I got a, I got an even bigger baloney than that. <laughs> Eventually, I will bring forth a baloney big, a baloney and nonsense big enough that it will be irrefutable. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I find this extremely humorous. You may not, but it is important to be able to see through these people, and they're very, very transparent. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Good night.